Along the 700 kilometers of the former Western Front, ceremonies mark 100 years since the end of a conflict that traumatized and transformed the world. U.S. involvement came late but proved vital in boosting Allied manpower and morale. On September 26, 1918, the United States Army launched the Argonne Offensive, led by U.S. General John Pershing, to this day the deadliest battle in U.S. Army history. Essentially, the first few days the gains were relatively good, not as much good as General Pershing wanted, but they were relatively good. But then the Germans moved in more re reinforcements. Golk conducts tours of the battlefields, uncovering the scars and ruins of war that still litter the front lines, like this German narrow-gauge railroad station on the edge of varennes on argonne used to supply the vast network of trenches and artillery positions. The 47-day Argonne offensive recaptured hundreds of square kilometres. As French and British divisions also advanced, Germany realised defeat was inevitable and signed the armistice on November 11, 1918. The guns fell silent. Varennes was among the first towns liberated in the Argonne offensive, captured by US troops. It is a place of pilgrimage for American visitors, including this group of reenactors who are touring the battlefields to mark the centenary. In the United States, the First World War is kind of overshadowed by the Second World War. I had relatives who came over uh, quite literally with the idea of you know, making the world safe for democracy. I mean, they, they came with very high ideals. Over 116,000 Americans were killed in the First World War. More than 14,000 are buried at the Meuse Argonne American Cemetery. World War I was the first time that the United States had deployed troops in these numbers to defend foreign soil. By the end of the war in 1918, there were some 2 million American soldiers on French soil. Despite its sacrifices, America was ambivalent about any enduring role in European security after the war, says historian William Philpott. It took a number of years. Uh, Europe didn't settle down. There was more trouble between France and Germany, particularly over the question of reparations. And here it was American finance that started to play a part in international affairs. World powers would once again go to war in 1939. American military power became decisive in European security. We see it being built up to defeat fascism, but we see it being maintained thereafter because of the threat uh, from the Eastern Bloc. And uh, although American power has changed its nature uh, after the end of the Cold War, we still see that America has retained this capacity to project power globally and act as the world's policeman. For America as a nation, that role is under threat as rival powers seek to challenge the United States' supremacy. For America as a people, the centenary of the armistice offers a chance to remember the fathers and sons who never came home from a war that some fear is being forgotten. Henry Ridgewell for VOA News at the Argonne Battlefields in eastern France.